that I don't that re the recording continues. I'm not sure. It would no, it'll, well, it'll continue if you if you jump off because okay, okay. okay, yeah. yeah, and Daniel will be able to stop it. I'll, I'll bring you offline, Garrett. Okay, perfect. Um, well, let's start then. Thank you very much for joining the August. Uh, call. Uh, the, usually we don't necessarily do a DSC community call, that's why we maybe advertised a little bit less this time, but there's a very good reason why we're doing it today. And we've got the partial team here. They will talk about DSC, right, which makes sense for DSC community call, but what's in more details? Steve? Sure. Uh, so you know, we've had a number of uh, actually I was on here before talking about DCB3 and I'll, I'll admit like, in fact, I had a presentation at PowerShell Summit North America and I did miss that date because originally we we're going to make stuff public in June, I think was my original estimate. Uh, but, you know, there are other things I uh, had to spend time on. So no, no, uh, I'm not gonna make up any excuses, but things always take longer than you expect. And here we are now. Uh, we did make the repo public on Monday. So it is at, uh, in fact, I'll put on the chat if you guys have not seen the blog post and maybe Mikey or someone else can put a link to the blog post while I talk here. I'll I'll do it in a minute anyway. Okay. So so the main thing here really, right, is this is kind of like uh, what we're referring to as like the next generation of uh, desire state configuration. So it kind of follows the general philosophy, but there is a number of big differences that I want to kind of make sure everyone is aware of. But before I go into that, I think the key thing I want people to kind of get across here is this is still very early in development, which is uh, both a good and bad thing, right? So the good thing is it means people in the community who are uh, you know, fans of DSC, use DSC, you can give us that feedback early because now it's easier to change it before a bunch of code gets written and a bunch of people have dependencies on that code. Um, but because it's early, it does mean that it's not feature complete. It has a lot of known bugs. We are, that's why we deliberately call it alpha. So it's not even a beta at this point. Um, and, you know, we're going to continue to develop it. Um, and hopefully, I don't have a date in mind yet because it still feels far enough away that I can't say when we'll have uh, even a beta or GA. Um, but it is something we're investing in. Um, and again, it is we appreciate any feedback the community has. And so one of the big shifts here is that it is not dependent on PowerShell anymore, right? Um, this that the idea here really is, and we've got some of our feedback from some of our partners like Azure Guest Config. It's like, hey, you know, people love the concept of desire state configuration, configuration as code. Um, one of the limits is that, you know, if you want to write your own resources, you have to do it in PowerShell. And for some people, that's not their strong suit, uh, may not be something they're familiar with. And so for us to kind of help grow the community all up, right, it's really, hey, one of the big shifts that we're making is you can invoke this from anything. It doesn't have to be within PowerShell. So it's not just, it's not a module, it's an executable right now. Um, but also, you can write your resources in whatever language you want, as long as you follow certain um, pretty simple rules in my in my mind. But we'll see based on the feedback. Um, but the benefit here, right, is that even if you only want to live in PowerShell and use um, PSDSC, the module, uh, then you can still invoke the DSC executable to enact configuration. You can still leverage um, resources written in other languages, as well as continue to use your PowerShell-based ones. Now. With the PowerShell based uh, resources, there are a couple of limitations um, just to be aware of. So one, um, most of you probably have not written a binary resource. Um, most people don't even even know that that exists. These are ones shipped in Windows that are implemented as WMI providers and on Linux, very small set of what is known as MI providers, which is uh, basically deprecated, no longer supported technology anyways. The WMI side is still supported in the sense that it ships in Windows. However, there are limitations on um, currently, uh, and we'll see if me if there's a strong community uh, desire to have those. Maybe we can see if we can support it. It's going to be a big bunch of work, but right now, that my base resources, uh, DC resources, not supported. As far as I know, there's only a small set of them. I would encourage the community to say maybe we could rewrite those as partial classes, for example, right? Um, so speaking of classes, the so classes is definitely supported. For both uh, Windows, Linux, and Mac OS. Oh, by the way, I'll mention DC from the uh, new V3 from its inception is cross platform. So, to, again, have the biggest addressable market. We want to make sure it's not just Windows. Yo, can I ask you to, can I, yeah, can I ask you to just like go back? Okay, so what are you talking about? 
like admit it like let's say some people haven't been in the dsc community call for uh, a few months now oh sure and they just not like they've heard about dsc v3 they know about the old dsc the very old dsc yeah. you know like it's been more than 10 years now so it's so been you a know while, yes yeah so what is that dsc v3 you're talking about and let's go back there okay so uh i don't think i have like i didn't prep any presentation because i don't have any slides but let me let me try to cover it at a high level and um I, Mikey's here also. Me, he wrote a lot of the docs, so maybe he can help fill in any gaps I may have missed because uh, I'm not uh, doing a structured presentation here. No, no, um, we'll so, just discuss. We'll just discuss, and then yeah, we'll okay. go high level, and then we'll deep dive, so, and so we'll ask like, questions. The, the key thing here that is the same, right, is that it's configuration as code, so it's declarative, right? So you're gonna de you're gonna declare your desire state. This is what you want the system to look like. Uh, in fact, some of the scenarios that we're branching from the old DSC is actually at the application level, at the user level, and that system level as well. Um, as an example, you know, WinGet Configure is one of our partners is building their solution on top of DSC, and they're going to move over to DSC v3 now that it's in a more uh, usable state. And that is for a user for software, not for the whole system. Um, the other so, thing so is really, you know, yeah. So we've got the guess, so we've got uh, the WinGet team looking at uh, merging with DSC v3. What about uh, guest config? Well, machine config, sorry. So I don't want to make any pre-announcements, but they are um, they are currently built on top of the uh, current DSC, right? And so we are working um, very closely with them to give them a story and how they shift to side by side or entirely over the DC v3 like that's still something to be figured out so uh, that that should not be a secret that you know they're already put on DC there's a new DSC uh it enables more uh scenarios for them so I expect that uh it I'm not giving out anything that is secret that uh, they're looking at DC v3 yeah so they're looking at it on the goal is at least for your point of view to uh have something that they can use in this Absolutely. so yeah so, so so the, DSC v3, one of our key partners is um, Azure Guest Config, yes. Okay, so you want to build something. So DSC v3 is something that can be used in Mission Config. It can be used by Winget Configure and anything else. And so, DIY, and also we deliberately also have um, designs in such a way that it could integrate with like Puppet, Chef, Ansible, Salt, all the other ones that people may want to use, right? So where, where does it fit in this ecosystem? So basically you're talking about, and this is what you meant before when you said DSC is a platform, or at least you're focusing on the platform approach yep. to it. So so tell us how that works and on what's your vision for that platform. Sure. So so one of the things, um, this is where people who are familiar with like DCV1 and LCM um, need to understand, right? Like uh, DCV3 currently, as it's um, the scope of the design as a platform, is not an end-to-end -end solution. Right now, you can still do DIY, do it yourself. Um, but for example, you know the old uh, local configuration manager LCM is a service that runs in Windows, and it cannot like do automatic uh, detect drift detection, remediation, like every 15 minutes, 30 minutes, whatever you set it to. Right. It also has like reporting capabilities and all these other things. Um, DCV3 today is literally an executable and a, a, and a set of patterns on how uh, either higher level solutions like machine config or Ansible, whatever, can integrate with, or um, people can author resources on their side, or they can actually orchestrate some level of configuration as well, right? But it's, it's more manual. Although you could technically hook it up with like task scheduler or cron and get close to what LCM, some of the stuff that LCM used to do, okay? Uh, so that's, that's exactly what I mean by a platform and not a solution. Because our expectation is that higher level solutions like machine config, Ansible, and Chef, they've already, they have a huge ecosystem. They have a ton of code already written, ton of customers. Uh, it does not make sense to try to compete with them from scratch. It's a losing battle. <laughs> so, but we can provide a means for people to, uh, you know, more easily uh, author resources. And you know, again, a lot of focus right now is more on the Windows side because Windows is still kind of lacking in some regards to this space, right? So, um, so hopefully that kind of answers some of those questions now. Related to that is um, the way I think about it is like three kind of customer segments for this, right? There's um, I talked a lot about the resource authors, like you know, you own an application, you own uh, how do who do I want to pick on? Let's say let's say you're the Windows networking team, and I'm not alluding that they're doing this because I haven't talked to them yet, but you know, it'd be great if they had a DC resource so you could actually do declarative um, configuration of the network, the uh, network adapter stuff like that, right? So that'd be something that they should do, and maybe we'll talk with them and convince them to do it. Um, so that's one side is people authoring resources so their stuff can be managed in a declarative way so they don't have to worry about the higher level 
um, utilities and all that stuff that they have to build, right? So there's a platform for that. The other set of customers is really like the integrators, like these are like the chef puppets, machine config and stuff like that, where they have their own orchestration and they want to just be able to leverage people who write DSC compatible resources, right? So this is where in the old DCB2 style, you have invoke DC resource, you have get DC resource, right? So you kind of bypass the LCM and you're able to call resources directly through that level of abstraction. So that's possible and one of the design elements in the DC executable. Right, and I can kind of, if you want, we can do that later. Um, the other one is really, you know, we decided to kind of um, have orchestration as part of DC executable. So we are using the ARM template syntax, or at least a subset of it. But this means that you can actually have a configuration. So in the old days, uh, V1, V2, you would have like a configuration keyword in PowerShell. It's a script, and you would run that script, and it generates a MOF, and you deploy that MOF on the different nodes. Or if you have LCM, you can do like a push pull kind of thing. Uh, in this case, you know, MOF managed object format originally derived from SIM. No one really, uh, the interested industry kind of didn't use it. So it was very uh, a niche thing. Um, it also depended on, you know, this uh, without going into the weeds, like this thing called MI, which is like a management infrastructure open source kind of version of WMI, which is no longer supported by that team for our purposes. Um, anyways, it, it was not a good area to invest in. So instead, you know, I think the obvious choices, if you look at what's being uh, adopted by the industry all up is really JSON and YAML, right? So in that case, we're, we went heavily in that case where we expect humans to write YAML and we, we expect machines or processes to pass JSON around. And then we're also leveraging JSON schema as a way to do validation. Again, um, if you remember the old DSE, there's MOF used in two ways, right? One is the configuration document that gets generated and one is schema for script-based resources, um, which is one reason people should be writing class-based resources. You don't have to worry about that schema. Um, but in this case, for your own custom resources, you would have JSON schema as a way to validate. However, if you write it as PowerShell, you don't have to worry about JSON schema. Um, we're, we're able to have an adapter that just, although it's not completely complete yet, um, but it's still, it's functionally works. Um, you, you just do classes or you do uh, script based. Now, one of the things I wanna make sure people understand, like script based resources will not be supported outside of Windows. And this goes back to the problem with MI uh, and no longer being supported because we require MI, uh, the library, to parse them off to understand the schema. And because um, that is no longer supported, we can't ship it. In fact, we're, we're in process of taking it out of PowerShell 7.4. Um, and because of that, it won't be supported off of Windows, right? So Windows itself does still have the MI that's shipped with Windows support by the Windows team. So we can still use it there, but the open source one is no longer supported, so we can't. So if you're going to write in PowerShell, write in PowerShell class. Yes. So the translation of what you said is, yes, don't don't write just script. <laughs> so yeah. yeah, look forward, just learn how to write a class, like a DSC class. It's not like, a, you know, it's not that difficult. And there's, uh, there's good documentation about it, right, Mike? Yep. <laughs> yeah, because you, 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 you spent a lot of effort writing those. That yes, yeah, yes, and actually, I looked. I was I was impressed when I saw the the brand new documentation about that. So, uh, so yes, I, I actually I don't know if it's Mikey or if if it was shown as well who wrote that. But yes, uh, there's a lot of yeah. It, it's all so there, Mikey. <laughs> yeah, so there's a lot of documentation there which has been revamped as well. So, uh, so yes, please write classes. Yep. Um. I, I kind of like this Q and A format. So, Gail, uh, what what else do you think I should cover? Um, I don't know. Well, well, first of all, um, so when did you start working on this? You know, what was the initial project? What was the idea? <laughs> and you know, where is it going? Where are you at? And where do you think it's oh. going in the future? I'll be honest. I don't remember when we first started this. Um, that was I not yesterday, right? Up. It wasn't yesterday. Um. We could look at the early, I mean, the, since the repo is public, you could look at the first commit, and that's when the thing officially started. Um, officially, but it yeah. started before that. It did start before that, but uh, I mean, you were involved in some of those conversations, um, and you know, there were a lot of different opinions on how we should approach this, and I'm sure now that this is public, there's still a lot of different opinions on whether or not we made the right decisions, and again, I, I think one of the key things is it's still relatively early, although as we progress, it, things become harder and harder to change. So if there's any fundamental things we should be considering, um, please open those as issues or discussions in the repo um, and we'll take a we'll take a look at those. <laughs> <laughs> 
Mikey, like myself, Mikey, <laughs> exactly. Um, oh, there's actually a question. So let, let's take oh. the question. Ian, if you want to, if you want to just unmute, I'll then shift to ask your question. Oh, OK. Uh, so I, I had a question around, do we have like a, a slide on what it would look like? I pasted this. Um, this slide that I saw in the. Um, in a conference. Um, where AWS is doing like the declarative implementation in PowerShell, where they're basically just simplifying the uh, the JSON format to a more compact PowerShell. So do we have a, a, a slide like this as to when it when DSCV3 supports ARM, what it would look like in uh, Azure. I'm going to point to Mikey's awesome preliminary documentation. If you want to post some links in there, yeah, you did. The oh, links are, are yeah, the links are a bit up from the in the chat. You can post oh, them okay. again, uh, Mikey. Anyway, but uh, I would say like the the CDK is like it's a DSL for uh, for AWS, and then here we're talking about like the DSC. So what is DSC v3? And I would simplify saying that that's a utility so far. And yeah. maybe maybe Steve, you've got it on your machine, and you can just share your screen quickly, so then we sure. can grasp a little bit what it looks like. I can show a couple of things here. One quick thing I wanted to highlight about uh, the question is uh, you the syntax for the configuration document looks like ARM. There, you can't currently uh, like drop a DSC config into ARM, right? Like as as part of like setting up a server, that's that's not a thing you can do right now. Yeah, and, and for those who are not familiar with ARM, ARM is the Azure Resource Manager. Um, so although although we are under Azure, the DC platform itself is cloud agnostic. So you could use it in AWS, Google, whatever, or off off the cloud, you can use it on prem, whatever. So, but um, you guys can see my screen, right? Yeah. Okay. Can you so, can you maybe make it a bit bigger for the recording? Right. So I thought it was already big. All right, let me, <laughs> I'll make it a little bit bigger. But every time I zoom, I'm going to lose. Uh, more more screen mass. Is this big enough? No, or I can make it that, one more. Yeah, that's perfect. I think. Okay, so if you're not familiar with um, Azure ARM template syntax, I mean it's, it's a JSON, and basically there's a. And just to be clear, we're using a subset because ARM templates are tuned towards uh, basically REST APIs, right? So there's a bunch of information in there that is not needed for the purpose of DC. Um, so the key thing we wanted to do is like we didn't want to invent a new syntax. Um, if you're already familiar with ARM, then you should feel very comfortable in this space. If you're not, I, I think the number of things you have to learn, at least for now that we support, is relatively small. So you can kind of see um, there's some metadata stuff. Uh, you can ignore that for now. I don't think there's even, I forget if this is actually supported in my ear. No, I think it actually ignores it. But anyways, you have a bunch of resources in here. Um, currently, these are all run sequentially, so one right after the other, but this one's saying it's going to call this OS Info one. It's going to call into the registry resource twice. Um, none of this, this example here uses PowerShell. I'll show you a PowerShell one later. Um, but basically, if I were to run this, uh, let me bring up my terminal. It's a little bit bigger. And let's see. So this is all in the repo, so you can run this yourself. And the um, configurations are under the DC examples folder. Uh, and this was which one? This is the. OS info registry. I type it right. Yep. I don't. I don't want to do the YAML just yet. Okay. So you pipe it to DSC uh, config get, and this is going to now execute obviously the get operation against all the defined uh, supply resources. There, it does take a bit of discovery time up front. We're we're going to add like progress. There's an item open to add progress, but anyways, you can see the result here, right? Like again, if you if I were to flip back to the JSON. Um, in the registry, I'm asking for uh, two values out of the two of the same paths in this case, but it's going to be the product name and the system root. And you can kind of see it ran this. Um, it tells you, like, you know, here's the schema. Uh, it did validation against the schema provided by the resource. And so this is um, it's a little bit confusing because uh, what the OS reports and what the registry reports is two different things, right? And this is a Windows thing that I won't get into, yes. but basically, 
Windows, I'm running Windows 11, but the registry still says Windows 10 Enterprise. Uh, but the system root is C colon backslash Windows. So this is running live on my machine here. And if any resource had a problem, then if you know one of the best practices from a PowerShell DC perspective that has its reasons so that you can kind of make the admin understand what's going on, uh, you would have it in messages. And also, so, so some of the stuff that we're learning from prior feedback from old DSC, we're trying to apply here so that it's uh, like a upfront, right? Now, if I were to show the equivalent YAML, so this is exactly the same thing as the prior, but you can kind of see it's much more condensed, much more human readable. You can also have comments because JSON technically doesn't support comments. Um, and JSON C is not as prevalent as people may want. Anyways, um, much more condensed, much more human readable. You can do exactly the same thing and you'll get the exactly the same results. So if I go back here and change this to YAML, uh, you, you should get exactly the same thing. Um, one thing I'll mention, just mention is um, if you look at the output, you know, you see it's actually YAML output with color syntax. So the DC command here, which is an executable, again, I'm running this within PowerShell, um, has a little bit of smarts to it. So if it knows that you're running it interactively and the way it determines that is that you're not piping it to something else, then it's actually going to emit YAML because, again, it's much easier for a human to read. Whereas if I were to, for example, pipe this to more, then uh, what it does naturally by internally is really uh, emitting JSON. So you'll again, the, the pause is always the initial discovery, but this JSON is exactly the same as this YAML, but you can kind of see it's not really that human readable. But for a machine or a higher level solution like machine config, Ansible, whatever, it, it makes more sense for them to process the JSON versus the, uh, the YAML, which has like a lot of white space and stuff like that. Uh, so that was one thing. Let me quickly maybe show the PowerShell example here. So again, this is written in YAML, but you can do the same thing in JSON if you really like JSON. Um, but here we have this new concept called a group. Um, although I think maybe we should start renaming this to provider. I'm not sure we should we should have that separate discussion. But the, so this is a kind of like a new thing here where a the way the PowerShell support is added is it itself is a new resource, a DC resource. In fact, it's in this repo uh, down here somewhere, PowerShell group, right? And this resource is actually written as a PowerShell script. So you can you can look at it. Uh, and the script leverages uh, PS Desire State Configuration Module to actually do the work. Um, and then there's the JSON, which is how the DC Expo discovers all the resources on the system. And in this case, um, it's calling itself a provider, which means that it can actually, it's kind of like an adapter to another way to think about it. So these PowerShell resources don't have their individual JSON file to say this is, you know, like the file resource, script resource, and all this stuff. It basically, uh, this tells DC actually like, call this command, and now you can enumerate all the PowerShell resources. If I were actually to run DC resource list here, right, this is going to do the discovery, and it's going to show all the resources that it finds. And the, the DC v3, let's call them native resources, um, are found by the path environment of verbal. It's not using PS module path, it's just path. But the PowerShell ones here, you can kind of see here, it says requires PowerShell group to, for these to work. These are just, again, the normal PowerShell stuff, nothing changed here, right? So it's going to be PS module path. These are all modules. Um, I think, uh, actually, I'm not sure. So I think some of these are class. Maybe some of these are script, not really sure. Uh, Gio may know just by inspection, but anyways, you so can kind of see, and there's like yeah. others, like if they had descriptions, it'd be here version, stuff like that. But anyways, going back to the sample here. Uh, PowerShell. So in this case, um, I'm going to call the PowerShell group. And, and one of the other side benefits, by the way, of having this PowerShell group is that there's two, I'm calling two different PowerShell resources, and it's not going to create two PowerShell processes, right? This group is going to be a single PowerShell process. Uh, and then we also have a separate uh, Windows PowerShell group here, which is um, basically using the same script to do it, but basically it allows you to declaratively de define if you're going to use PowerShell, which means PowerShell 7, um, or Windows PowerShell. So if you have some older resources or if you have resources that require some .NET Framework APIs or something that's not compiled PowerShell 7, you can mix PowerShell group and Windows PowerShell group together in the same configuration, and it will spawn Windows PowerShell or PowerShell 7 as needed. Obviously, Windows PowerShell only works on Windows. Uh, in this case, it's going to query the uh, OpenSSH service and it's going to get the administrator account and then um, separately it's going to call back into the registry resource. Uh, and again, this registry resource is written in Rust. 
So if I were to run that real quick, uh, example PowerShell. Again, the, the initial pause is the discovery, but it only gets it only needs to run discovery once with the exception of PS Desire State configuration, which is a, uh, a feature we'll add later so that it doesn't have to redo its own discovery every time. But anyway, you can kind of see here the partial group. Um, it queried the SSHD service. It got information out of it. Uh, the administrator group. So both of these came from PowerShell, the partial resources. And of course, this one is just the rush resource, which I showed earlier. Uh, so that's kind of like fundamentally. So, that. so you have so you have the the DSC is a utility that you you use in the command line. So you've shown it on Windows, but you would do the same thing on another OS. Yeah. So I have like um, let me see. Make this big. And do you have an Azure do. example? I don't. Um, so can you currently can today? You... So if you so the question was Azure, right? So yeah. you uh, if how do I want to put this? Um, I think there is a desire so that you could have uh, a DC configuration within an ARM template and it gets enacted. Uh, we're not quite there yet. I'll put it that way. So, however, if you had a, you can certainly create a PowerShell DC resource that called in the Azure. Uh, I don't think I'd necessarily recommend that, but that that'd be another way to do stuff in Azure. But um, let me see. Let's see, so I think I have, let me build this real quick. I may not have this re so while that's going, uh, I'm going to go back to here. Well, you, uh, yeah. no, maybe you can come back and then we, I had another question before I go to Ryan's question. Um, so you're building something. So you said we can run this uh, because uh, the repository is open source. So how, what do we need to do to be able to run this? Oh, and I believe that's, that's what you're doing on the other that's window. Easy. So actually, I think I had it open on my other. So I, I've, uh, I'm, I'm RDPing into it. my main machine is a MacBook. I'm RDPing into Windows system, but I have this open already. So in the repo, I'll just go to the front page. If you go to releases, um, we do have the the first re release, right? This is a three zero zero alpha one. So we're going to start with the version three zero zero. There's some debate within the team whether we call it a one dot zero. I find that it'll be less confusing to users because we're calling this V3 to start with the V3, although it's actually the first version of this executable. Anyways, you're still calling um, DSC, so you know what's <laughs> my you know what's my opinion on this. I know, I know. There's other debate whether the command itself should be called DSC, but uh, we're leaving it for now until we have a strong justification. It should we call something else? Anyways, under the assets, we do have um, pre-built packages. Uh, again, there's nothing. There's no installer right now, right? Um, there, there's a long ways from where we are today to having an installer, having it on WinGet and stuff like that. Those are things that we do want to get to eventually. But right now, um, we do have some zip packages for Windows. We have both X64 and ARM64. We have basically ARM64 and X64 for Linux, Mac, and Windows today. So you can download these, um, unpack it. Inside the package is a PowerShell script that I wrote which would look like this called add path. Um, and basically, whoops, dang it. I hate this. Hold on, I need to get rid of the magnifier because I can't navigate stuff with this thing on. And I'm, I'm very used to using the Mac <laughs> key presses for magnifying. All right, I need to hit control. All right, anyways. So inside, uh, once you unpack the archive, you should see this script and you can run it. And basically all it does is add the current working directory to your path, right? That way it'll find a DC command, it'll find example resources inside the archive and stuff like that. That's all it does. Um, Perfect. So I think my build is still, oh, it's finished. Okay, so let me make this bigger. So if I were to then, oh, by the way, if you if you want to build it yourself, you just run the, the build script that's in the repo. And if you're on Windows, I think even on non-Windows, I think we fixed it so that it should automatically install the REST SDK if you don't already have it. And on Windows, uh, install the free version of the Visual Studio build tools along with the Windows SDK, all that's required to actually build. Um, and then once it's built, uh, it actually adds the, you can kind of see it, it added it to the path so everything just gets found. So if I do DSC, it should give me the help information. If I do DSC resource list, then it should, uh, yeah. Well, oh, one other thing I'll mention is um, there there was apparently a regression in PowerShell 7.4 related to uh, 
without getting into the, the ton of details, the DSC uh, subsystem that we pulled out into what was PSDSC3 alpha or beta, we, I think we call it beta. Anyways, um, that's being investigated. So we do have this error message that we detect this and um, you need to run it under 7.3 for the partial support. You don't care about partial support for now. You don't have to, you can ignore this error or this um, non-terminating warning message. Anyways, you can kind of see it did this. And if I were to uh, run that, this sample here, right, then it's going to tell you, uh, again, this is going to pop up every time for now, but uh, it'll tell you I'm running on Mac OS 13.5. And I'll, in fact, I'll show you here, or rather, I need to go to the repo to get the JSON real quick. So I'll show you quickly what it looks like if I, and I'll make this bigger, but there's nothing of interest. Why is this not? Okay, uh, if you go into, so the OS info is a very simple resource I wrote for testing. It only supports get, um, test is synthetic, and I'll explain what that is later. Um, but basically I can take the sample JSON here. And let me just put it in here. Uh, and if I pipe this to DC, oh, look at that. Um, so basically, what this is going to do is I'm going to pass this JSON directly to the resource. I'm not using a configuration here. Uh, and I'm going to ask it to do a test. So, you know, if you look in the README, um, I got this from my other Windows machine. So it says it's running Windows this. It's going to test against my MacBook. So obviously this should not succeed. So it says the desired state is Windows 11 professional. I'm actually on a MacBook. Um, so in desired state is false. And it also tells you like these are the different prop. These are the properties that are different between desired state and actual state. Um, so that's kind of a very simple example, but this is how you may integrate with like uh, different tools and not if you don't want to use the orchestration built into this tool set. So you, yeah, so you basically you can use the DSC utility with uh, different inputs. Either you do the full configuration, which is the initial YAML file that you showed, or you can just provide this JSON, which is a specific resource um, information, right? That's right. So so the DC config subcommand works against the configuration document, whereas the DC resource command is yeah. the equivalent of invoke DC resource, get DC resource, things like that. Right. So. Okay. So uh, on my keypad, the CLI reference docs, that's perfect. Thank you, Mike. Um, well, actually, so one other thing I'll just show real quick because it just came to my mind. Um, so again, if, when I, because so, sometimes I'll, I'm, I'm so used to doing this, I don't think about some of the stuff that's happening. So one of the things you may notice here is like, uh, you know, I talked about YAML being some of the defaults. So here you actually get a table, right? So this table is actually, again, something built into DSC executable knowing that you're running this, um, what it deems to be interactive, so that this is much easier to view. But if you were, for example, say chef, right? And you don't wanna, uh, you wanna cache this because you don't wanna have discovery happen every time. Then basically, if uh, if I were to store this into a variable, let's call it R, right? Then it's actually gonna emit JSON, just as you would expect. Um, in fact, if I were to find uh, the OS info one, so it actually takes wildcards OS info. So now this should just continue. Uh, it's just OS. Oh, it might be case sensitive. Oh, or maybe it, it's, it's broken. It's not case sensitive, but you're getting the the 7.4 error for the PowerShell group. Oh, and oh, that's right. We we never we haven't okay. So we didn't fix the problem yet. Where when there's an error discovery, it fails entirely. All right. Uh, the way I'm going to fix this for now temporarily is I'm going to delete the PowerShell resource. <laughs> <laughs> All right. It's like a fix. Oh, it should have. But why am I not getting? Hold on. OS info. Let me just try this for a second. No, it's not finding it. I think there is some other issue here it's not finding that resource i don't i can't think of it, the reason why. try microsoft star all right we need to uh, have a bug open on that this is very odd anyways okay what i wanted to show is like if you were to capture this this is obviously that json but you can actually um if i show me where is my json here so when you do this right with the name, it actually has to do discovery again because it doesn't know where this thing exists. But if you actually provide the JSON directly, then it actually skips discovery because the JSON tells it everything it needs to know to call this resource. And so it's much faster. So anyways, if you were 
a higher level tool or you're building your own tool. If you just do the DC resource list, cache all that initially, and then call the things you need, you don't have, you'll skip discovery every time. Um, yes. Sweet question. So, so yeah, the, one of the question uh, from Ryan was, well, what do you see uh, this used with? Like, do you think it's only to configure OSs or is it used to configure um, maybe some cloud resources? What yeah, so, so I think one of the things we are targeting with this um, new approach is ideally everything, right? Um, I think if you look at, uh, let's call it a classic DC for now, that is really only tuned towards system configuration, doing the entire system. Uh, you can call it, you know, in Azure terms, you call it guest because the host is actually the one running the hypervisor. Um, in this case, we, as I mentioned, we do have partner actively using power, uh, DC today. Uh, Winget, right? So Winget's scenario, Winget configure specifically, is that you would have like a YAML and a Git repo that defines, hey, if you want to be a contributor to this repo, you need to have a environment that develops, let's say, C Sharp, right? So they have a YAML that defines, here's all the plugins you need, here's a configuration for those plugins. And if you were to apply this configuration, then you'll be set up so that you can just start developing code for this environment, right? That's that's their goal. Um, so And that one is per user, right? So some of the things that we've had to think about differently for supporting that type of scenario is, in some cases, um, so if you think about DSC and system configuration, one of the things you may have is to say, um, you know, you need version 10.0, Windows 11, SP1 or something like that, right? In which case, guess what? It's going to try to install SP1 because your system doesn't SP1. In the Winget configure case, um, because if the user doesn't have SP1, but let's say that you need something that requires it, the user doesn't want you to start updating the operating system, right? Instead, they want to be able to validate ahead of time whether or not you, you meet the requirements before it starts making changes to your system. So let me go back to my Windows system and back to VS Code here. So one of the new concepts to support this is this thing called assertions. This didn't exist in DC prior, um, but the idea here is there's a special group called assertion group. Um, and basically any resources you define here just always does a test. So whether or not you do a, a configuration set, get, or test, the stuff in here that this, this group resource knows to just call test on it. And if you create this dependency, then this assertion happens before everything else, although this will happen serially anyways. Uh, but you can make this dependency so that if this fails, then it's not gonna uh, try to apply the rest of the configuration because you have some stuff that you need to make sure is appropriate, right? Maybe it's the system architecture, Maybe you want to make sure the user is an admin or whatever, whatever the case may be. So that's one of the new things here. Um, now, as far the, as like the well, concept is a bit yeah, but, different. Yeah, I just wanted to add that the concept is a bit different than what it was with DSCV1. With DSCV1, the configuration you would create would be like exactly this machine. So it yes. was it would be exactly everything for this machine would be done either in one configuration or uh, several partials, but that yes. would be assigned specifically to this machine. This one is in a way made differently where it's composable. So you can have different uh, configuration document that you can use and you say, well, you, you can run this one or you can run that one. And then anyway, because of the assertions, then we can validate whether we want to run it or not before it actually does anything or any damage. That's right. Uh, two, two quick things to say. So one of the earlier questions was like, what can DSC manage? Uh, and one of the things that I want to highlight when we're thinking about authoring resources is that the main concern is whether or not the thing can be idempotently managed, right? Is it is it a a system or software component that can be described with a set of properties where you can do uh, idempotent management, right? Because there are some times where like that doesn't really make sense. Uh, like there there are certain actions that are more uh, orchestration rather than configuration. Uh, so if it can be modeled that way, you can implement a DSC resource to do it. Whether you should implement it as a DSC resource is a different question, and that's always going to be contextual. Uh, but would a, a DSC resource is really a declarative idempotent interface to configuring some sort of component? That that would be the way that I would I would uh, suggest you think about it. Um, I I, re I really recommend uh, watching uh, Demetrius uh, ignite 
was it build sorry build a session because it really goes through uh this you know what's either potent you know what is the configuration why is it interesting like he's got he's done a very good talk so i really recommend people if you want to like dive a little bit just go on and see that that's going to give you some clues as well yeah yep. good point really quickly idempotent just means that you can reapply the config again and the system won't change Right, like the the idea is that uh, you don't have side effects. That's the yeah. the, the main benefit. Uh, and then declarative in this case, uh, what we're really talking about here with DSC, is that you say what you want, not how you want it to get there. Right. So if you can model what you want that way, then DSC is a great fit for whatever you're trying to do. Um, the other thing that I wanted to just quickly highlight because we've kind of talked around it a little bit here, so. Uh, the new resources that are in this repository are command-based resources, right? So they're they're built around calling some sort of command. Um, standard resources do exactly what you think. They get set and test. Uh, as uh, Steve mentioned just a minute ago, there's also assertion resources where like they don't implement set, right? There's 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 no set for them to do, uh, and you call those with the assertion group, um, and then. Uh, there's also uh, group resources um, and provider resources. And providers are a special type of group, right? So the PowerShell uh, resource here that lets you call PowerShell DSC resources is a provider. It sits between the DSC executable and the PowerShell DSC resources so that you can just use them without having to think about it. Um, but there's also, and Steve, you may want to get into like how uh, you, the team is thinking about this, but there's also group resources that change how DSC is going to invoke the resources without them being brand new, right? So like, yeah. So uh, that's a good point. And I know some of these terms uh, are gonna be confusing. Hopefully it'll be less confusing over time. <laughs> but um, so so if you look up here, right, I got these, um, these are the resource JSON um, to define. So this is how, again, this is how DSC actually finds these resources. It looks for these .dc .resource .json files. And as long as it, it matches the schema, then it's going to assume it's a it's a valid resource. And each of these, like for get, set, and test here, um, this is th this resource is actually not implemented in that it won't actually do things in parallel. But it kind of shows how this will actually work, right? Um, if you do a get against this, it's actually going to call itself. I mean, the DSC executable itself is going to pass um, these arguments, and it's going to tell it to run in parallel. The idea here with this parallel resource is that anything that and there's an example YAML how this could work. Um, is that each resource uh, within this group is going to, again, it's up to the user to know this is safe, all right? But uh, it's going <laughs> to run this concurrently. So these will all happen concurrently within this group. Um, and then there's a separate grouping. Uh, and a grouping is useful where if you want to make uh, create dependencies, you don't want to have to have, like dependencies could be an array. It is an array, but you don't want to say list everything out. You just want to say this depends on this group. Um, and if this whole group is successful, then continue to this next step, right? Um, and both the group resource and the assertion resource and the uh, parallel resource are all implemented via the DC executable itself. Um, therefore, the the properties that you pass is exactly the same as another like a sub ARM template within it is, is the way it works. Does that mean you can nest them? Absolutely. You can have another group within a group, parallel groups. Within parallel. The way it fundamentally works is if you think of it as like a tree, then every tier will get executed, and then the next one, the next one. So each tier is, is kind of independent, where the parent doesn't know really anything about the grandchildren, if that kind of makes sense. So that, that, that nice. also means that dependencies can't go beyond a tier, right? You can't say something in this tier depends on a great grandchild. Like It's not going to go through the entire uh, graph to figure that out. And this is consistent with ARM, is my understanding. So why did you pick um as the <laughs> API? So, so I'll be uh, I'll be honest here. We didn't it. start with ARM. Uh, we started with some other cool new syntax that just you know <laughs> was came out of nowhere. And, and just as a starting point discussion that we had with WinGet because they were one of our early partners. Um, but then later on, you know, it was brought up. Hey, you know, ARM has something very similar. In fact, some of the stuff that we're doing is very similar. To ARM is not exactly the same, but kind of similar enough. And I said. You know what, if we align with ARM, we have several potential benefits. One is in the future, we could just be a literal payload within an ARM template and it won't look different, right? It'll, it'll, it'll validate the same and all that good stuff. 
Um, also, there's a potential in the future that, you know, maybe there's integration with bicep, right? So you can use bicep, uh, bicep as a way to generate a DC configuration, and we wouldn't have to create a equivalent set of tools, right? Uh, so I think by uh, s sticking with ARM, then whatever tools and stuff that exist today, you could potentially use it with the future DSC. So that's your bet. That's that's what our <laughs> current bet is, yes. But <laughs> even if that doesn't prove to be entirely true, I, I think like cognitively, if you're familiar with ARM and there's a lot of documentation on ARM templates, then I think that transition just can make it a little bit easier for some folks. So instead of creating creating a new standard to unify them all, you just went with yes, the famous one. SKCD yeah, comic. Yes, exactly. Every, I'll tell you this, every standards. time I try to create something new, I always think back to the comic and say, "Am I creating yet another problem, or am I actually solving a simpler solution?" So true. So that, that answers uh, Daniel's uh, question. He asked, you know, will will we be able to use Bicep to maybe write the configuration in another way on the transpile to have this? So you said maybe at some point. Maybe in the future. Like today, today it wouldn't work completely because although you could probably make it work, you'd have to probably handcraft the output to emit stuff that would fail uh, according to our JSON schema. But that's something okay. that uh, I think as, as this project progresses um, closer towards feature complete, that's, that's one of the discussions I would have with the bicep team. Daniel? I see hand up. Daniel. Cool, yeah, thank, thanks, Steve. Um, thanks, Gail. A um, couple of questions. So, so we do have some WMI resources and things like XPS, DSI, state. Um, so I'm assuming we will need to replace those, which we've always talked about for years, but never got around yes. to. Yes. That's that's the first question. Do you see an easy way of doing that or is it basically just rewrite? I would probably say rewrite it uh, as a partial class. Now, technically speaking, because it is a WMI class, you could write a partial class that calls a WMI class <laughs> and that I mean, I, I don't know enough about those resources to tell you what I would do. I probably would write it from scratch because it will be easier to maintain in the long run. I was about to say, who's going to support that? <laughs> yeah, I'll, I'm just I'll saying, I'm just saying technically you can you do can, it. You can, you probably shouldn't. <laughs> I don't, it probably yeah, isn't I, a good I, idea. So, so what about the file resource? Yes. What's that? The file what about resource? The file resource? Well, here's the thing, yeah, right? Like, I think some of the general resources, like the file is a good example, right? Where, guess what? I think uh, outside of the drive letter, um, you can make it work cross-platform and you can get a lot more uh, users to use that because it would benefit a lot more folks. So I think that's a good example where you could probably write as a partial class or as a native resource mm. and have so, it cross-platform yeah, compatible. From memory, one of the challenges we had with file is we would need to create a new name and we wouldn't do an in-place replacement of that resource. But I don't think that would matter too much. The other thing was, I remember we have a DSC, the DSC LCM allowed restarting the machine or supported rebooting at certain points. Yeah. Um, especially for Windows, that was required. Does that, how does that work in DSC v3? Is that? Good question. So it doesn't work today, <laughs> but uh, we do have an issue that you, if you're, if that's something you care about, I think it's a lot about a lot of our uh, community comp, you know, the community samples and community comp uh, resources typically have examples that include a restart for, yeah. for various reasons. So that would be more the question is if if we are, you know, for the DSC community resources, what is it that we need to do to prepare or make sure all of these resources uh, will support V3 and you know have V3 examples and all of that sort of stuff. That would be more the question I'm sort of heading towards is what what does the community need to do to to get everything up to V3 standards? Yeah, and, and I mean I think the general if I if I look at it as a meta comment right, like I think that you guys are using this stuff in production, whereas I'm on the engineering side looking at it more uh, academically, if you will, right? So this is where I really need your feedback. Where you know I in this case I opened an issue back in April. And, you know, because I think reboot is important and we want to figure out a way to support it. Um, so if you have ideas, like there's a few comments here, uh, more comments now, but anyways, um, you know, add in your scenarios, add in your um, concerns. Like even if you don't have a proposal on how we fix it, at least add more details so we can take those into consideration as we design it. 
Um, and I would recommend looking at some. There's a bunch of issues already open on stuff that I know we want to uh, support either from old DSC or even, for example, pick up another one, which I think now is called export. Uh, this one. So this is uh, also maybe known as like the reverse DSC scenario, right? Where um, someone may have manually configured a system the way they want it, and now they want to be able to suck out all the configurations so they can apply against thousands of other containers, VMs, or whatever the case may be. Um, if you care about the scenario, add, add your feedback in here about, again, some of the things we should take into consideration as we think about how to support this. Um, but this is something that we definitely want to support because I know it's, um, it's heavily asked by users. Gotcha. But yeah, there's like 51 issues already. Um, some of these are just bugs. Some of these are features. Um, I don't think we have a label. Maybe we should have a label. Yeah, maybe. Uh, so you may more easily find it. But uh, do take a look at some of these. And you know, we're. I, I think what helps us to prioritize is really seeing user feedback on things that they care about versus uh, otherwise we, we will come up with our own prioritization that may not match what you guys want. Gotcha. Perfect. Thank you. Any other question? So what you you haven't answered one of my questions so oh. far. So you you've <laughs> said you know when you started doing it, what you're working on, and so far, but you haven't said about you know looking forward. You know what's kind of time frame, roadmap. You know yeah. how much effort are you putting in there? You know this kind of information. So here's um, I don't want to answer this. So I here, here's the challenge I have. Um. I don't have a time frame because the previous ones I've kind of publicly set uh, didn't match <laughs> what I thought was going to happen. All right. Uh, so thinking about Porsche get? Uh, no, no, no that, that's <laughs> one thing, but that's a whole other project. Uh, but even for like DCV three, like again, like I, I thought we would be um, have the repo public by June, but there was a bunch of other work that needed to be done, so that slipped to August, right? Um, the other problem is right now we have very I don't have as many resources on this project as I would like. Um, I am actually in process of getting additional resource. Uh, involved with this, so hopefully things can move a little bit faster. Uh, we do have some partners, you know, big partners like Machine Config and Winget uh, and some other ones I'm not going to disclose looking at this. Uh, so there is definitely some urgency to kind of get to a 3.0 GA type of release, um, but I'm not going to set a time frame right now when that's going to happen because uh, I, I want to make sure that we're not date driven, we're, we're quality driven, right? Um, although if you, uh, one of the things that Jeffrey has always said is to ship is to choose. So at some point we have to make decisions and choose because otherwise we'll never ship. So I don't have a date yet. Um, I hope, I don't want to say soon because it's definitely not soon, but uh, within my lifetime, how's that? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but, but basically I, we don't need to really like knowing exactly what the date, the release dates, because you know, those days are gone. We're not really waiting for that, but that's something that you're actively working on. And then you have a, you have continuously worked on so far and there's no reason for that to change and yes. if there's a break there's holidays maybe, maybe a better way to answer ability. your question gail is uh, we're starting to trying to use projects more in the github repo to kind of indicate like for example uh you know we create this public preview one um to kind of what are the things we need to get done before we can even make the repo public right um and i think these should have been well if this one actually isn't done so i'm gonna have to move that out later but i've already created like a new project for what i'm calling alpha 2 and so there's uh, a few things in here that I think, you know, we're prioritizing as things that we want to get in. Um, again, this is where we're going to have, I don't know how many alphas we're going to end up having before we get to a beta. So for me, the beta is when we're feature complete, right? Meaning that everything that we think is uh, necessary for a 3.0 release from a feature perspective is complete. It won't be complete in the sense that it will be bug free, but it'll be complete in that everyone can try it. Um, the design is done. Um, and in, in any changes in design at that point, we kind of consider more as breaking changes. Whereas during alpha, you're going to break in changes left and right. I mean, this is the nature of an alpha. Like as we learn, we're going to we're going to err on the side of <clears throat> improvement and not backwards compatibility. Because today, there's no definition of backwards compat for this new thing, for the most part. Um, but anyways, after we get through this, we'll create an alpha three, alpha four, until we finally decide, hey, we're at a beta. And after beta, we'll get to release candidate. After release candidate, we'll get to GA. At that point, things are kind of more set in stone. Breaking changes are much, much harder decisions, which is also why early feedback is uh, advised where it's much easier to make changes now than after we ship, where it's very hard to make such changes. Okay. Is there any discussions going on or is it just the issues on the repo? Uh, I think I had enabled discussions in a repo. I don't know if there's any. Correct. 
open yet because it's just open publicly like on Monday. You can create the first discussion if you want. I mean, this is just a default thing that GitHub provides. All right, all right okay. got it. Get rid of all this stuff. Anyways, uh, feel free to create discussions. Like if if you're not sure, you know, about something or it doesn't, it's not at the point where it's so solid that it should be an issue or a feature. Uh, discussions is the way to handle that. Perfect. So, oh, Ryan, you got a question for you to unmute. Just a very quick one, seeing as we've now got the SE in its own uh, repository and we've got discussions. Should we try and get people to move discussions away from the general PowerShell repo when it's about DSE into this one? Yes. Um, now that we have this open, uh, anything that is DSC, well, the, remember, the, okay, so this is where Which DSC, DSC. I know, this is where DSC <laughs> is a little bit uh, unfortunate, and this is one of the discussions we've had. But if it is PS Desire State configuration, we should definitely move it to that repo. If it's now against future stuff, then um, we'll, uh, we'll have to we should, we should transfer those over here. So if no, it's sorry. about DSC, it's going to be this repo. If it's about DSC, it's about the other repo. And if it's about PS DSC, see my point? <laughs> If it's about PSDSC, which is the module, then it'll be in that repo. Okay, so yes, I, I, Gail, I get your point, say... but as again, there's, there's counterpoints as well. But anyways, sure. I don't want to get into this discussion here. And I just want to currently I... call it Microsoft uh, Desired State Configuration and PowerShell Desired State Configuration, which is the best distinction you're going to get at this point. Yes, so I just wanted to uh, wanted to say that, like, when you talk about PSDSC v3 and when you talk about DSC v3, there's two different things now, correct? Yes. So, Let me ask you a question, a, quick, a, a very uh, simple question. Like, I, I think we kind of maybe made a mistake calling the PSDSC v3. Uh, what if we call that PSDSC 2.1? Do you think that will at least <laughs> eliminate one point of confusion of the two v3s? Um, okay, so I'll ask the question in another way. Do, uh, I'll ask another question to answer that question. Um, how do you integrate the DSC utility with PowerShell? Well, that, it's just a command line tool. So PowerShell, again, I want to remind everyone, the, the second part of the word PowerShell is shell, and PowerShell can run any native command with caveats. There are some known issues that we're fixing over time, but you would so run you, it, right? Are you removing? So, so here's the thing, right? The DSC, like, Hold on, let me go back to my term. Like I am running all this within PowerShell. So if I were to, for example, do this and I do convert from JSON, right? In this case, I am going to get a PowerShell object. I'm actually going to run a faster one, but anyways, you, you get the point, right? Like what, one of the reasons we kind of went with um, JSON is that it's very easy within PowerShell to convert JSON to a PowerShell object and manipulate it that way. But my point is you're still using, uh, for the PowerShell resources, you're still using the PSDSC, right? We're we're calling PSDSC underneath to invoke um, the resources. So PSDSC module will still exist as needed for PowerShell support. So maybe the, maybe the, there's no problem with the PSDSC v3 in the module. It's just that the DSC is a different beast, which is sitting above the PSDSC for the when you're using PowerShell. That's correct. For the resources. Yes. So so uh, it's just different different tools basically. But you that doesn't tools. remove. I, I think the confusion is the word DSC is in both of them. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I know. That's your point. I get it. It's uh, yes, there's also, like... but there's also branding considerations. Like we don't want to call this something completely different. Good. Sure. But you know, uh, so for everyone on the call, no, we need to be very careful what we say, and uh, that's why there's PSDSC, which is the modules, and then you have DSC, which is the utility, which is different from the DSC v1, which was more geared towards, but not really a solution. Yes, it was a partial solution, but never, never made it all the way to the end. Yes. Perfect. Has anyone another question? It's we have less than a minute. Okay, so when where can we reach out to you? What can we do if we want to get in touch? And when are you going to maybe share more of this news, this information? Um, so regarding DSC v3, I think the best way is probably to uh, open discussions. If it's not like if you have general questions, like um, how do uh, I don't know, I don't want to pose a particular question, but like you know maybe about an old resource or how it gets supported or something like that. That's probably more of a discussion in the repo. If you actually have an issue that you found. 
um, or if you have ideas on how this platform can evolve beyond what uh, DCV2 was, open those up as well and we can take those into consideration. Like the, the point here is I want to make sure we have opportunity for the rest of the community to also provide feedback on the existing issues and features as well as any new ones that open up um, so that we're not just making decisions by ourselves as a small team. And uh, you will discuss, you will have a presentation as well, at least on the 24th of October at uh, PS Confi Minicon. Which yes, I, I will. Uh, for that one, talk. I will try to have something more formal with slides. <laughs> Just do th demos. This one was more ad hoc. This one was more ad hoc. S yeah, structured demos. Like this one is really about opening, like you just open sourced uh, the repository and you've shared That's right. the the blog post about the planning update and things like that. Yeah. So you will talk again in, in October about, you know, presenting this in, in a bit um, yeah, more structured we'll have way. Some, um, newer things at that point to also cover beyond um, what's in the repo today hopefully we'll see right. well we'll see yeah we'll see <laughs> perfect thank you very much is there anything else to add uh, mikey uh yeah i just wanted to say that the docs on the uh microsoft doc site are going to be continually evolving uh i'll be continuing to add stuff as we go um if you're interested in samples uh and tutorials those are actually uh currently being hosted here because uh well the reasons aren't important um but uh so these are being hosted in the dsc samples repository in the powershell org uh and there's a static site that deploys so that you can read them there um we'll link to everything from the official docs uh but that's where those are living and this is one of the early places where people can contribute um so we have a reference implementation of how to make a DSC resource and not PowerShell, although I'm guessing this group probably less interested in that. Uh, I suppose most people here want to write it in PowerShell. But if you do want to write in Rust or Ruby uh, or Go or whatever, um, we have a tutorial for writing a command-based resource that way. And I'll be adding tutorials there for other stuff as well. Um, and there'll just be a continually expanding set of documentation uh, in the main site as well. Perfect. Thank you very much. Thanks for joining in. And see, talk to you in six weeks. Yes. The next year's community call. Thank awesome. you. Bye. Thanks, Bye. guys. Can you stop the recording, please, Steve? Or well, actually, yeah. maybe Daniel can? I don't know. Yeah, I can now. Oh, perfect. Okay. Oh, yeah.